Hello everyone, how guys doing? Hopefully you guys are having a wonderful day. And today we are here with a video on tips for being efficient in old school RuneScape. RuneScape is a game that takes quite a bit of time, so being efficient with the time that you spend on the game is quite important. So today I'll be going through my favorite tips in regards to how to go about that. If you guys enjoy the video, I'd appreciate a like. And on top of that, if you want to see more videos as soon as they go live, make sure to subscribe. But with that said, let's go ahead and get on into the video. So the first tip that I have is to use rune light. This is the most basic one and probably a tip that a lot of people have already employed already. Essentially, this is a client with a ton of different plugins and features that will allow you to play the game better. I will provide a link down below and essentially from there, go on over to the site and you can download that client. This is a client that most everyone uses in game and it's one that Jagex condones and everyone's under the same umbrella in the sense that if something were to be out of line in here, you would be in the same basket is you know 90% of runescape players so there's nothing to worry about in that regard whenever there's something that is out of line in terms of a plugin rune light will remove it and jagex will alert them so it's completely illegal to use you don't have to worry about anything in that regard and this also will save you countless of hours and also make a lot of painstaking tasks in game a bit easier on you there's also plugins i will talk about throughout this video that are very helpful as well and really it will make your runescape gameplay much easier there's hundreds of plugins and installed in the client itself and then from there there's a plugin hub where people can submit plugins as well and basically add a lot of quality of life to your gameplay next up is tick manipulation this is one of the basic fundamentals for being efficient in old school runescape essentially what you're doing is you are manipulating the game in a way to think that you're doing one action thus it allows you to do another action quicker it's quite a strange thing in game but it's one that is very commonplace in the efficient part of the old school runescape population. One of the main methods to do this is by making herb tar. So essentially you use an herb on swamp tar while having a pestle and mortar in your inventory. It will start that animation and then you cancel that animation and go back to what you're doing. Once you go back to what you're doing, you can obtain an item essentially as soon as you start doing it. And this will allow you to obtain things quicker than you normally would and get more XP per hour. There are plenty of methods to go about doing this. Not all of them are gonna be the swamp tar method and some of them may be 1.5 ticking. Some may be two ticking, some may be three ticking. So make sure to look up efficient ways of going about certain skills and you'll find things accordingly. A lot of people use the term EHP, which is efficient hours played for these types of things where you're doing tick manipulation. And if you're someone that really likes an active gameplay, then I would highly recommend this. Another important feature for people that like an active sort of gameplay is prayer flicking. This is a common method for PVMers to stay longer on trips and use less supplies. Essentially what you're doing is every single game tick, you double click your prayers. Go ahead and turn your sounds on and set up your quick prayers. I'm gonna be using piety and melee prayer. And from there, go ahead and turn it on. And then every time you hear this noise, go ahead and double click. As you can see, didn't use any prayer. If you can do that, if you double click every single game tick, your game will not register that you're using prayer. Essentially, you'll turn it on for the game tick, but you'll turn it off before the game tick registers it and uses it accordingly. This essentially is an infinite prayer glitch that you can go ahead and utilize, and most people do it at different bosses, but you could do it anywhere, even on Slayer Task if you so desired. It'll save you some good GP per hour on your prayer potions. In addition to that, it will allow you to stay on these trips longer, depending on what you're doing. If you don't want to do game sounds, there are also 100 beat per minute songs that you could try to time it up with, and that would work as well, and those are listed up on screen. Beyond that, flipping is a great efficient money maker in the sense it takes very little time to do and can make you quite a lot of money, and the more that you learn about it, the better you will be. Essentially, every item on the Grand Exchange has a margin between what someone is willing to pay and what someone is willing to sell. Because if there wasn't a margin there, then that would mean that two offers would be met. And you can utilize this by buying at the highest price that anyone's willing to pay, but then selling at the lowest price that anyone's willing to sell at, and there will always be a margin of money to be made. I have some flipping guides down below that you can go ahead and check out if you'd like. Definitely could help make you a better flipper and help churn more money in for your account, but this is a very passive way about going and making money because essentially all you have to do is once you know what items are good to flip you just put in some offers go do whatever you'd like in game maybe you do some bank standing skilling maybe you go do a slayer task whatever it may be and then whenever you feel like coming back to the ge you can come on back switch the offers around and just continue to churn in that money it takes a little bit of time and you might not be great at it at the beginning no one is but the more that you do it the more that you learn the more money you'll make and the better you get over time 
Another really efficient way of going about the game is playing an alt account. Essentially, this is a second account that you can log on and get GP or XP on while you're playing your main account. Back in the day, you used to only be able to play one account at a time. However, that is no longer the case. So you can certainly go and make money on a side account while you're doing some sort of skilling on your main account. And this is very obviously efficient in the sense that you'll be making money when you normally wouldn't be if you were only making one account. This is my favorite alternate accounts are Rune Dragon Alts, Brutal Black Dragon Alts, Wyvern Alts, Gargoyle Alts. There's plenty of skilling alts as well that you could go ahead and work on in there depending on which skilling method that you choose. Basically anything that you find that is able to rake in a good amount of money for you and doesn't take too much effort is going to be a good way of going about it. And really the only thing that you have to be able to do on an alt account is maintain a bond unless you want to go ahead and pay for membership on a second account. I'd assume most people don't. So as long as you can make a bond back every two weeks and then make extra money for your main account, that's really all you're looking. Of course, it will take some time to be able to build that alt account up if you want to make it a really good alt account, but there are plenty of alt accounts that are quite good early on. I currently don't have a video on this, but I will be making one in the near future. So if you'd like, feel free to subscribe and you know, I'll have a guide out for you. The next tip is to find a few amazing money makers that you really enjoy and then stick to them. Typically they'll be PVM related, mainly bossing, but there are skilling methods as well that you could do. This is very dependent on what stage of the game you're in. I can't give you two or three money making methods you can do. My personal ones that I enjoyed on my maxing grind was Vorkath, Venonatus, Revs, and Raids. Now, Corrupted Gauntlet would also be one that I'd throw in there as well, but those are like four methods that I use quite a lot. Essentially, once you know the really, really good money makers, try out a bunch of them, see which ones you really enjoy, and then from there, pick two or three of them and, and just stick to them because at the end of the day, you don't wanna be doing too many money-making methods that aren't raking you in much GP. Obviously you wanna be efficient about your time, so do the best ones that are available to you that you also enjoy. If you do that, you'll be able to farm in a ton of money that will fuel a lot of different adventures that you could go on. That's not to say that the only thing you should be doing is these two or three money-makers. Of course, you can do some other stuff on the side, but if you're ever looking for GP, you should know what to fall back on. That's very important. Then the next tip for being efficient is to do your hourlies, dailies, weeklies, whatever it may be, any activity in game that has a designated time slot that you can do it in typically is worth doing because a lot of the reasons that these can only be done on an hourly, weekly, or daily basis is because they're too good and so you have to have some sort of time period in between so people just don't abuse them. For example, if you want some decent XP per activity, Farm runs are a great way to go about that, whether that be fruit trees or regular trees. On top of that, you could do birdhouses, which offer hourly hunter XP. And in addition to that, you could throw in weekly XP through Tears of Guthix, which is a great skilling activity that will allow you to churn in a little bit of XP to your lowest XP skill. Beyond that, there are some good cash making activities that you can do every once in a while. For example, we have herb runs, birdhouse runs. You could also buy battle staffs from Zaf and Varrock. You have the Throne of Miscellanea that you can have workers work for you and bring in items that you have to pay them to go get but it's definitely worthwhile on top of that there's dynamite and karen that you could go ahead and use and beyond that you could have herb boxes if you have nightmare zone points built up then on top of that there is flipping which can farm in a lot of gp per hour for you as well as we mentioned before but essentially all of these methods are really good if you want to be most efficient with your time going forward beyond that one of the biggest utilities that you can have for your account is upgrading your player owned house there are so many amazing upgrades that you can get however construction is quite expensive so i'd warn you to be cautious with this and understand what parts of your house you want to upgrade when you go into it. Essentially, the main thing that is useful early on in a house is the portal room, where you can go ahead and have portal locations to different areas. A lot of them may be obscure areas that you still have to use sometimes, so it's nice to be able to have those. However, I would say that really the quality of life kicks off at 83 or 84 construction. Once you have that level, you can boost with teas, you can boost with spice stews, you can also boost with a crystal saw, and you can achieve most anything in terms of what you can build in your house. Some examples are the fairy ring that you can build in the middle area. There's also a jewelry box that can teleport you to many different locations. In addition to that, you have a restoration pool that basically allows you to restore most everything on your character. There's a mage altar where you can go ahead and switch on over to different mages books. There's also plenty of storage space for items that you might not necessarily want to keep in your bank. You have an altar that you could use, and honestly, there's so many different 
added things that you could throw on into a player own house but at the end of the day it all comes back to being a big quality of life upgrade for you it will cost you a good bit again keep that in mind but once you have it you know you'll wonder how you live without it the next tip is to be stingy and don't trust people this is the internet of course so you don't want to be too friendly with strangers you know your parents have told you that when you were a kid obviously you know there are bad people out there with bad intentions and runescape is no different those people will try to take your money and so you want to be careful of course it all really goes back to the classic saying that if something looks too good to be true it probably is the great exchange is really the hotbed for all of this i mean people know that there's just a lot of faces coming on in a lot of noobs just a lot of churning of players so you can hit the most amount of people with scams and you can lure in the one or two people that may be silly enough to actually fall for it so as long as you're weary and just approach with caution you should be good and then the final tip of the video is one that i think is the most efficient and that is to make sure that you're having fun <laughs> um at the end of the day you know we just talked about all these sweaty ways that you can go about improving your xp per hour and doing this that or the other but if you're not enjoying the game, then that kind of defeats the purpose. There are a couple examples in this video of efficient things that you can do that personally I don't do. One of them is prayer flicking. Sure, I'll do it sometimes if it really requires it on whatever task I'm doing, but for the most part, I just think it's way too sweaty and I'd rather pay a little extra money just to use prayer potions. I think that that's definitely the way to go for me because I enjoy that more. In addition to that, I don't do many weeklies or dailies. On my Iron Man, I do them because they're more necessary, but on my main account, I was never a big fan because one of the main reasons I didn't like RS3 was how many weeklies and dailies that they had in that game and I felt like it was just a burden to go ahead and do all of them. Now, Old School RuneScape isn't, in, it isn't even close in that regard, but I still don't enjoy doing those things because typically they're just not fun ways to play the game they might be efficient but they're not ways that i enjoy so i avoid it runescape is a marathon not a sprint a classic tortoise in the hare story as old as time so just know that you know you can be as efficient as you want you can grind as much as you want you can do all these things but at the end of the day if you don't enjoy it you're gonna burn out and you're not gonna want to play the game as much which will ultimately be less efficient than just going down a path in the game that you enjoy because if you enjoy it then you're more likely to continue onward and you're also more likely to to complete whatever goals you'd like and you'll have fun along the way which is really the whole point of playing a game right so that is going to be it for the tips for being efficient old school runescape hopefully you guys enjoyed if you did make sure to leave a like but also love to hear whatever tips you have for other people down below in a comment but with that said hopefully you guys have a wonderful day and uh